I don't always subscribe, like, and or follow This Is True Really News, but when I do, this makes no sense. Please, you do the same thing. Tony? What? Start the news. Oh, I thought I was supposed to like, subscribe. I may have a new subscriber, by the way. Oh, yeah? Who? And it's a boy. Eric? No. And he knows one of my granddaughters. That kind of boy. Yeah. You know. Will he last I just the night? meant for a moment. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. When I was a boy and it's I had your my show. darling. Ch- <laughs> what? You're just the. I'm the comic Jamal. relief. <laughs> I'm the sidekick. You're here to dress up the set. Um, <laughs> in the eye candy. That's yep. it. <laughs> you, Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> wow, that ages me, doesn't it? It sure If does. I have to go back to Farrah Fawcett to find eye candy. Who else would be eye candy? Who's newer eye candy? Quick, help me. Oh, heck, Someone. I don't know. See, I think Taylor Swift is cute. So, Yeah, but her politics sucks. So oh, I don't it. care about her politics. See, I do. I'm with... I don't I'm look with, at her name. Say- the blonde woman on the Fox thing with the deal. I have no Laura, idea who that is. Laura Ingraham. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up and sing. <laughs> I'm with her, you know? Anyway, let's go and get onto this thing that you so, were doing. The running joke at my house when my darling daughter showed up and was able to understand English, <laughs> well, actually, even before this, was you can, you know, you can start dating when you're, I don't know, 39, but 40, then only 50. if I drive. Yep. <laughs> and she laughed and thought I was kidding. And you weren't. And I wasn't, but apparently I was, because she got married at 19. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <sighs> anyway. Only because he was in the Navy. And then, my, yeah, that makes it a lot better. <laughs> oh, look, she's marrying a guy in the Navy. <laughs> the only My daughter is very lucky that this is landlocked, although they met in the water, so it's a whole other story. Um, oh, that's right. They were both on swim team. Well, they met like in th- when they were in third grade with the okay. AAU swimming. Anyway. Never mind. So, of course, she listens to her father, doesn't date until she's 18 and gets married by 20 and shows up with three granddaughters. Yep. That are cute three by any standards. Who I explained that they should probably not start dating until they were 39 and only if Jake drove. <laughs> so now my 17-year-old, who informed me ap- just after her birthday that I'm almost an adult, has... a a boy guy, a special guy kind of friend. Oh, they but can my, play Legos together and stuff like that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> my middle granddaughter, you know, the same one. Yeah. I have the Kara clone is the oldest. Yep. And the sweetheart who could possibly be a terrorist, the youngest. <laughs> right. And in the middle is reality. Oh. oh, that's nice. So apparently there's a Tyler or Tyler Wells, Taylor Wells. Ty- Anyway, Steven she Tyler? said, what? Steven Tyler? You are off on the weird skinny people again. <laughs> Tyler Guitars? No. Okay, fine. Tyler Wells. All right. They're, they're, they're I know I quote, just friends. Notice uh-huh. the air bunnies. Yeah, 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 I see you. That means I'm not believing it, Jaden. Remember, <laughs> I don't think she listens. You think there's more going on than just Legos? I think all three of them just like, subscribe, and follow, and that's the last we've seen of them. Fine. Kind of like life. And anyway, Scott, it's This Is True Really News, Tony. This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. Yeah, go ahead. You just do your story. I'll go next. All right. Uh, one night around 4 a.m. Yes. Which sounds like an oxymoron to me, but never mind. Well, that. it's. One dark around 4 a.m. Yeah. Uh, An otherwise perfectly healthy 38-year-old man from Massachusetts leapt from his bed yelling, what if my land, two if I see? How far uh, back are we going? (laughs) It's always. (laughs) Actually, his only words were gibberish. uh, The type only, say, you could understand. Uh, It was, as it was, he also fell out of bed. He was having a violent seizure. Yeah, (laughs) fine. I see you too. He was having a violent seizure. His wife. Just remember, I pretty much sort of know. Remember where you live. <laughs> I've been there before. He says. I think if I call Ian, he'd help. He, he would. Yesterday, he was having such a good day. He wouldn't stop killing me. Man, he was on it. You know, he was fantastic yesterday, and he kept. You better explain that you're actually a family of zombies, and this is what you do for sport. <laughs> and I yelled, at, "I would you? What is this? Pick on Dad Day?" He goes, 
How often do I tell you I'm having a great day? This is a great day. <laughs> Let me have this. <laughs> Respect, man. <laughs> It was very funny. Anyway, uh, this guy's wife finds him on the floor shaking and spewing the aforementioned gibberish. He was rushed to Massachusetts General Hospital. Now, he had no history of seizures or of any cardiovascular, respiratory, gastrointestinal, gerontourinary, nor neurologic disorders. So nothing in the head either. Yeah. His toxicology, hmm. he could have been me. His toxicology screens were clear. He took no medications, prescribed or over-the-counter. He didn't smoke, rarely drank. Well, that explains a lot. Right? There was no evidence that anything had happened to him recently that would provoke a seizure. The only hint of a potential diagnosis was the man had immigrated. I know what it was. What? I already know. Okay. You ready? I don't want to spoil the story, but it's either COVID or the COVID vaccine. The only hint of a potential (laughs) diagnosis was that the man had That's funny in these trying times. I ch- chuckled internally. That was a chuckle? That was an oh. internal chuckle. Oh, so, 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 fine, fine. So, so. The only hint of potential diagnosis was the man had immigrated to Boston from a rural part of Guatemala about 20 years earlier. Okay. So a scan revealed calcified lesions in his brain and rendered a diagnosis of a word I'm going to try to pronounce. Neurocysticeracosis. Sure. Larval cysts from a pork tapeworm had migrated to his head years ago and nestled into various parts of his brain, right? My jaw dropped as well. Pork tapeworms, as you know, typically live in human intestines. I didn't know that, but I'm glad. Great. Now, I can't think. I can't sit. (laughs) The worm's victims, meanwhile, expel parasitic eggs in their feces. If that egg laid, what? The eggs would hatch? Yeah. Well, if the if it makes its way into the an environment with pigs, the pigs can carry out the worm's life cycle by ingesting the eggs. Right. That's how you get the worms in pork. Okay. Things get complicated, however, when a human ends up eating the worm's eggs. Thank you. This can happen in scenarios where someone is infected with a tapeworm who happens to have bad hygiene and also prepares food. Do you get where this is going? Oh, no. In other words, a poopy-handed tapeworm victim contaminates a meal. There we are. In this case, the eggs hatch in the human stomach, as they do in pigs. The larval cysts can hurts. end up I can't sit. No, I they can't can eat. end up in human muscles, but they can also migrate to the eyes and the brain. This is a, this is a dead end for the worm and can develop into a big problem for the human. <laughs> as we've seen in today's example. <laughs> A moral- dead end for the worm <laughs> and a bad thing for the what? Yes. Moral to our story? Yeah. Wash your poopy hands. Right. <laughs> to you. I just do a story. I just do any story. <laughs> don't know that I can. I feel like I need to shower. <laughs> I feel like I, I mean, this is such a careful which plate you're using to microwave your hot dogs, kids. <laughs> The dish found in the drawer of a Scottish country house fetched a staggering 1.7 million pounds in an online auction. Wow. Why does that never happen to me? Right. Why don't, why don't they say, hey, what's this piece of junk? And then this guy with a beard and a little suit comes, tw- probably tweed suit, comes in and goes, wow, that could be worth $2.3 million. Let me examine it. No, I was wrong. It's only worth $7.8 million. That never happens to me. I get it. He'd come in, he'd look at it and go, that could be worth many dollars. Looked at it and go, oh, no, it's a Woolworth knockoff. <laughs> Why does it have Scooby-Doo on it? That really devalues it. For those of you that don't know Woolworth, look it up. <laughs> There's Google. <laughs> the Scotsman reported a ceramic specialist working for auctioneers Lion and Turnbull. I like that. That'd be a great bar. I've, it would. Wouldn't it? Yeah. And Why do they always have two names for bars in Britain? What's the deal? Vlad? I don't know. Vladdy. Why is it always two? What's names? the deal? You know, why is it? It's the this and this. The moose, it's the always in the hand. The marshmallow and the overcoat. The wolf and the dead person. Yeah, all of that. Yeah. Where was I now? Oh, Lion and Turnbull auctioneers. Uh, they're specialists in ceramics, and yes, they have them. Discovered the dish, which featured a painting of Samson and Delia by Nicola de Gabriella Spraga. Uh, I have I no idea. That. Yeah. Okay, I get it. You gave it a. He would be point. known as Nicola da Urbino. Okay. A 16th century master of the Maya pottery. Okay. He's a master in this. He's a dead guy who was good at his job. 
You know, we could we could ask um, on this one because it, since it's Spanish, <laughs> we could ask one of Lad's sons, uh, who's actually he's going to go live in Spain for a year uh, for part of his degree. He's not trying to you know escape any. No. no? Okay. No. See, because Vlad's brother is a solicitor. There are no notices out on him is what I'm asking. No, no nothing. Like See, that. this is what I've learned from watching Gal Gadot. <laughs> notices are like Interpol warning or like uh, Interpol warrants. Yeah, that's what I learned from watching Gal Gadot. As the auctioneer, it was a real joy to bring the hammer down at over, hmm. at over one million pounds on this incredibly rare dish. Does that just not that was phrased badly? <laughs> yes, because if you have an incredibly rare dish and you bring the hammer down, you it's now bad. Have incredibly <laughs> rare junk. <laughs> you have pieces of an incredibly a former dish. Is what I'm you've watch got. More Gal Gadot. This is not worth it. I'm still back at the with the poop and the worms <laughs> and the. <laughs> you have Great. an X dish. Now you have ruined Gal Gadot for me. I hope you're happy. I am thrilled. This is even worse when you ruined Valerie Bertinelli for me. Thank you. Say goodnight. <laughs> Good night. This is true, really news. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.